So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome all of you to Amsterdam. I'm actually very proud to come back to Amsterdam after three years. So first of all, super glad that we can get together as humans again after this long COVID cost break. Um, Sustainable Food Summer is the first time I'm here. Um, it's amazing. There are a lot of like-minded individuals that are really, you can feel it, mission-driven, um, impact-driven. Um, I think it's a great opportunity to exchange, to uh, make new contacts, which is like really the essence and key to us really getting this vision done and turned into reality. Yes, good morning. Warmly welcome to this first session. I'll be moderating. I am with uh, Gloa Gap, one of the uh, gold sponsors of the event. Let's start by saying that energy and food security have really been brought to the fore with the current Ukrainian-Russian uh, conflict. In dealing with the current energy crisis, for example, countries, especially European countries, have been quite quick to react to the threat of energy um, security or energy shortages. And how I always say it is, we're at the we're at the start. We're at where you're parents had a phone connected to a case and everyone went, that, that won't take off. Uh, this morning was about uh, the Green Deal and the Farm to Fork strategy. We um, are rolling out a program of legislative initiatives to uh, transform every sector of uh, Europe's uh, food uh, system from production to transformation as well as uh, the part of consumers and uh, the food waste. So we're really trying to cover the whole, the whole food chain. We're uh, a supply chain sustainability ratings company and the reason why I uh, joined the conference is because we work with a lot of companies in the food sector uh, that want to get visibility into their supply chain sustainability practices. Um, a neutral group is, um, is helping companies on their road to zero carbon emissions and so companies are um, at the moment becoming more and more aware of the climate change problem and we can really help them to, uh, to, uh, to reduce the impact they are making as a company. And that can be the organization itself, but it can also be uh, products that they, are, uh, that they are delivering to their customers. What were the reasons, uh, apart maybe from climate change, but also were there other reasons that you said, well, for us climate neutral certification is an important part of what we do? that is not really appealing to consume, right? So maybe it's a question of marketing as well. How do you convince people that this is, in, for the good of the planet, this is the future? Um, because I think right now there'd be a lot of resistance to um, lab-raised and uh, fermented meat. It says actually that it's a set of farming practices and it's quite holistic. So regenerative agriculture is not about generating the largest carbon harvest. And I think uh, the most important part of regenerative agriculture is that it has such uh, uh, high potential for environmental benefits but also for economic benefits such as um, the reduction of input costs for farmers, but also uh, safeguarding source, uh, the future sourcing opportunities. I've come to the summit to talk about the ideas in my book, which is about diversity. The diversity that we're losing in the food system. And that's everything from plant varieties, crop varieties, animal breeds, the loss of skills and knowledge. 
and why I think we need them for resilience, for food security, for, for nutrition, for their cultural importance as well. And that's why I've collected stories from all over the world to in explain why they're so valuable and why we're losing them, why diversity is disappearing. We are seeing so many different green labels coming up globally. It just confuses the consumer, removes the trust. Uh, how do we all come together? I normally have pictures of products which have five, six labels on there. And I've got a picture of a product which has four labels, but none of them are organic. And the question there is to a consumer, how can they tell the difference? Even to, our, to us as an audience, we're supposed to be industry professionals, we can't tell the difference. Go into their website and find all detailed information on there, because just with a sticker you cannot explain climate neutrality. Correct. So this is our superhero. The, the Filamentos Fungus uh, Trigoderma Rizzi. We've just hosted our 13th European edition of the Sustainable Food Summit in Amsterdam. And in this edition, some of the key takeaways were, one, food diversity, how we need to have more diversity in terms of crop production and consumption. Number two, role of new technologies, how we need to think about new technologies like fermentation techniques, precision fermentation, cellular agriculture to produce animal-free products. And secondly, role of technologies in the form of mobile apps, how they can help farmers, traders and retailers in terms of moving to sustainable production methods, but also in terms of reducing costs. And thirdly, we heard about new technologies in terms of blockchain, vertical farming, how they're having an impact in terms of sustainability. There's are so many sustainability issues the food industry faces and it can be very easy to get bogged down with issues like climate change, loss of biodiversity, plastic pollution, third world debt, social inequality, etc. However, we always like to think by coming to the summit, by hearing sustainability best practices and hearing solutions, the glass is always half full and not half empty. So we should leave the summit by thinking of positive solutions how we can tackle these um, issues and the challenges the industry faces and build a food industry for the future which is sustainable and resilient. <laughs>